Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and in this video, we're going to give you five tips for beginners planning a cross-country road trip. Could be a road trip with an RV rig, could be with a car. And we're proud to announce that this video is sponsored by T-Mobile. More on that in a minute. First of all, you should know that the typical cross-country road trip takes about 35 to 45 hours of driving. Now, of course, there are a lot of places in the country that you can be going from and to, so those numbers can vary wildly. But something that you should do, and this is our tip number one, is be realistic about your travel time. Sit down, look at where you're going, look at the roads you're going to be traveling, the cities you're going to be going through, and plan accordingly. And if you are driving a motorhome or towing an RV of some sort, please know that it is much more challenging and mentally taxing than just driving a regular vehicle. And so it's going to take more time. And in fact, there are some states that will require you to drive at a slower speed. And that is also a factor you need to consider. The other thing you need to worry about is going through those big cities. Try to avoid them during rush hour because it will just make your life so much better if you do. <laughs> make sure you've got some stops planned that are realistic. Don't try to drive 16 hours in a day. You're going to be miserable. You're not going to enjoy it. It's going to be dangerous, especially for those of you in an RV or a motorhome. I really encourage you to take some scenic highways. The highways are often much more enjoyable to travel on a road trip than the big interstates. I know you're wanting to make fast time across country, but you need to slow down sometimes and enjoy the journey. So just be realistic when you're planning your daily driving times and travel distances. I'm feeling a little corny, I have to admit it going to take you probably a little longer than you expect. And along those lines, <laughs> I hate to say it, tip number two, you got to prepare for trouble. Now, we have taken many cross-country road trips and had no trouble whatsoever. Then there have been other trips. <laughs> where we've had a little bit of trouble. Wah, wah, wah. So be prepared. It means you need a basic toolkit. I would say bring like a tire gauge just to check your tires. Bring an air compressor in case you need to put air in a tire. Bring a first aid kit. You never know if you're gonna have a little accident here or there. Bring a window smasher slash seatbelt cutter in case you were to have be in an accident and need to be able to get out of your vehicle. Pack a couple of Mylar blankets. They're super tiny. They weigh nothing and they could save your life if you happen to get stuck in like a snowy situation or just colder temperatures where you're broken down overnight or something. Most of these scenarios will probably never happen to you, but if they did, some of these small little things that you can pack could really save your life. A reflective vest is a good idea in case you did break down on the side of the interstate. Getting out to inspect your damage or whatever the problem is can be really dangerous because people are usually traveling at very high rates of speed around you. So making yourself as visible as possible is a really good idea. The other thing you can do is get some road flares or some of those little reflective triangles that you could set up. Anything you can do to just make your vehicle more visible to people passing by on the road so that you don't get hit is a good idea. One of the most important lessons you learn when you're doing your first cross-country trip is to expect the unexpected. It's so crucial to take every precaution you can while you're out there on the road. Regardless of how far away you're traveling or how much pre-trip planning you've done before hitting the road, you really have to be ready for anything to happen. We stay protected on the road with help from T-Mobile because they're committed to keeping all their customers covered while traveling, especially us more experienced travelers. T-Mobile is the only national carrier with nationwide discounted rate plans for those of you 55 and older. Plus, T-Mobile customers with the Magenta plans now will get a year of AAA Basic at no extra cost, and you can even add RV coverage to that plan. Do your future self a favor and get covered. Because you really never know what could happen when you get out there on the road. And boy, aren't we proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> It's all happened to us. Speaking of expecting the unexpected or unforeseen trouble, tip number three is to let someone know when and where you're going. You don't have to give them an exact 
detailed route of every stop you're going to make, but you might want to give them a general idea of where you're going to be stopping each night and check in with somebody just to let them know that you made it safely to your destination. Another way that you could do this is to download some of the free phone tracking apps out there and share it with a friend or family member so that they can just log on and check and see where you are and make sure you're okay, make sure you're moving where you're supposed to be moving and that way somebody has a general idea of where you are and how to find you if there were to be some sort of emergency or whatever kind of scenario. Tip number four is to check the weather frequently because when you are crossing our country, you're going to experience a wide variety of different types of weather. Mm -hmm. And that may include some inclement weather or dangerous weather. That's ice. <sighs> Crazy. <laughs> I mean, the snow was thick on the windshield, and that's fallen just in the last 10 minutes. We have experienced the gamut over the years, and I'm thinking of the ridiculous torrential rainfall in Valdez, Alaska. Mm -hmm. The snowstorm that trapped us for several days in Yellowstone National Park. Tornadoes in Michigan, and windstorms in Utah. We've seen the gamut, and you really do have to check the weather forecast or else you may find yourself stranded in a place like Yellowstone. But I gotta admit, I do have fond memories of being stuck in Yellowstone. <laughs> actually. Fun, Only because was, we were prepared. We, we had we were prepared. propane, we had food, we had, we had what we needed to survive. What better on a cold winter day than grilled cheese and tomato soup? Don't tell the park rangers, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> this brings us to tip number five, pack like Goldilocks. Not too much, not too little, just right. You want to be well prepared, but in my humble opinion, you don't want to overpack. You already have one kitchen sink, you don't need to bring two. <laughs> you know, there is a condition that plagues many RV travelers that I call two of everything syndrome. And we suffer from it every year <laughs> when we bring two or more of everything mm -hmm. and you end up with too much clutter. So to me, the challenge is to pack everything you need and nothing that you really don't. But some of those things that you think you'll never use, you might end up using like some of those emergency supply type of items. So I would say when you go to pack clothing, especially pack it all, lay it all out and then remove duplicates, you know, sort of go back through and say, okay, I don't need four pair of pants. I, I can get by with two. Pare down those things that you have in duplicate. You know, you can always do laundry. I mean, those washing machines exist cross country. Travel with everything you need but also travel light. So that's it guys, five tips for beginners planning your first cross country road trip. Yeah, so for those of you out there who have done a cross country road trip, whether it be in an RV or a car, comment below and let us know how it went. Is there something that you wish you had known beforehand? Is there something that you know you did well or something that you would never do again? Did you have a good experience? Is it something you would not recommend? Let us know, we're curious to hear. I'll never forget my first cross-country road trip. And yes, I packed everything I owned into my 1985 hatchback and drove to Yellowstone Park and back home. And it was quite the adventure. That trip truly changed the course of my entire life. And I've been road tripping ever since. So you have reason to be excited. And yes, we encourage everyone, chime in, post a comment, share your experiences with our community. Till next time, this has been yet another episode of Long, Long Honeymoon. And what do we say here on Long, Long Honeymoon? We say, lo, lo, ho, guys. See you out there on the road.